the Flight Test. I'm Peter, and today we're going to be doing the FT Bronco build video. Before we get started, I'm going to set this aside because we're not building the VTOL version just yet. We're going to be building the basic airframe assembly of all the tails and all the styles. I'm going to need you guys to go ahead and check out the build video that Josh and Josh have done on the uh, Explorer core parts and core kit. This will basically get you through the fuselage and the other parts. And one last, last thing. Go ahead and build the uh, swappable power pods or the Explorer core power pod, depending on which power plant you want to use for this airplane. Go ahead and check that out. The link's down below and set these aside when you're done building them. So once you guys got your wing pieces punched out, these are the things we're gonna need. We're gonna have basically the uh, wing halves, which are two right here, two popsicle sticks, the trailing edge uh, spacers, and the wing spar. So let's get started. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and set these pieces aside, and we're gonna butt the two wing halves together. I'm gonna flip them over just like that. I'm gonna slide the foam in so it goes under the other surface. Go ahead and get some tape and tape them together. I'm just gonna start off by pressing them real tight together by pushing inwards on the surfaces. And put one piece of tape down here. And one piece of tape up here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and finish it off by running one strip of tape from the bottom to the top. Once that's complete, go ahead and flip it over. And we're gonna fill this joint when you open it up with hot glue. Go ahead and lay down the table to keep it nice and straight. And if you have a piece of scrap foam laying around, go ahead and take this and smear any additional hot glue down. And once that's done, go ahead and run one more additional layer of tape on that seam. Cool. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna go ahead and open up these gaps with a screwdriver or a barbecue screwdriver, depending on what you have. This will make it real easy to fold up when it comes to folding the wing halves together. Now on the bottom right here, where you see this piece like that, we're gonna go and fold that all the way down. It may be necessary to cut some tape if you've already taped it. And open just like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut a 45 on this surface and a 45 on that surface, because this part will fold over like that. Because if you notice, there's a material right here and it won't fold over because all that foam's there. So we're gonna need to remove that. Now, there's a couple things you can do for this. You can either use the knife and cut it very, very carefully and very slowly or you can use the sanding block. I'm going to use the knife because this is what I have handy. Now when you notice I do this, I'm doing this very careful. I have enough blade, but not too much more than this and not, uh, not small enough because if you cut this too shallow like this, you're going to be dragging and fighting. So what I do is I cut very shallow like this and slice my way through it very slowly. It's important at all times to keep track of where your fingers are in your hands so as to not cut yourself. And it's also important to have a very sharp blade to do this because it's a lot easier if you got a sharp one than a dull one because the dull one will be grabbing and slipping and sliding and not cutting through effectively and easily. I'm taking my time, just going real nice and slow. And it's okay if you make a mistake and cut through the uh, paper layer. If you do, we'll just tape it when we flip the wing over. Cut out just like that. Now we're gonna do the other side. And if you notice, we're not gonna start over here. We're gonna start over here, right where these two surfaces meet. And I'm gonna put the knife in. And also when I do this, I'm kind of pushing the wing and holding the blade still. I'm doing some combination of the two surfaces and moving them back and forward. Cause this makes it easy to control. Just to go and show you what happens if you do make a mistake, I'm gonna go ahead and cut into the paper and cut a little too deep. Cut that out and I'm gonna continue on. I'll show you what to do with that in a second if you guys do make a mistake. I'm gonna cut that little piece out and pull that out and set that aside. Now you can see the mistake right here is where you cut a little too deep. To fix that, all you need is a little piece of tape. Lay it down like that and rub it into place. And that's all there is to it. All right, now once this is done, we're gonna go need to assemble our uh, wing spar. So put this aside. Get out our box spar, and this is an A-fold. Now what we're gonna need to do is remove the uh, material in here, 
So once you guys uh, are ready to remove this part, what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold it like this. If you notice what I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing right here and holding the center piece that we're gonna remove in because we're gonna fold the outside part out. It's a little hard to explain, but once you guys try this a few times, you'll pick it up on it real quick. It just makes it much easier to remove this piece. Once it's all folded out like that, I'm gonna take this and tuck this side under too. If you notice, if you look from the side, it looks kind of like this, where you see the, uh, the main part of the spar here, the piece we're gonna rip out here, and the top of it right there. So now all I do is just simply just grab that and yank it, and slip it out like that. Once we're done with that, we're gonna go and glue this bar. And before you glue anything, make sure you take note, it's an A-fold, so that means above. So these side pieces are gonna go above the main part of this bar right here. So just before I glue it, I'm gonna do one quick test fold. This will kind of massage the foam into place if there's a little bit of chunks or anything getting in your way. You'll be able to mold it and it'll make it much easier to glue. Once it's already pre-tensioned, I'm gonna put some glue in there and we're gonna fold this bar up. Use the table as your friend and fold that over, as Josh likes to say. Ready? I'm just gonna fold that right down there. Once it's done gluing, you should get something that looks like this. All right, now we're gonna go back to our wing half, bring that back over here. And we're gonna go glue our spar in facing this way. So if you notice, you have your main part of the wing right here. This is the top surface. It's gonna be glued in just like that. And if you guys uh, haven't seen yet, when you do this A thing, it's direct in the center of the spar. So there's a little bit of a burn through and I can see center part right there. So I'm just gonna keep track of that as a reference. If you guys are blowing from plans, go ahead and just go ahead and mark a center with a marker or something similar. Go ahead and get your glue gun and fill both sides of the spar. All right, now comes the gluing part. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna line this part of the spar up to the front of the wing while lining up the center part to the wing. Put it on there like that, press it down. And hold there for just a few seconds. It's important to make sure that you keep this thing with a nice even pressure on the wing as to not have any deviations in warpage or anything like that. Now, if you guys have the popsicle sticks on hand, we're gonna go and put these into the airplane now. What these are for, these reinforce the center section of the spar in case you're doing some really high G maneuvers or you're carrying like lots of payload or you're anticipating high stress loads. It's not super essential if you're just flying with a single motor because I, I, I feel the wing is plenty strong enough, but just in case, we're gonna go and put these in. They really only weigh a couple of grams and they don't really hurt any, any performance. Just glue them right there. One for the front and one for the back. Now comes the assembly of the wing. I'm gonna go and use the hardest surface I can do this on, so I'm gonna remove this cardboard. Cause this will make the build go much nicer. Now before we put any glue, we're gonna roll this over and then test out the fits and make sure it, it kind of goes together nicely. So I'm gonna push that down, put a little tension on it. Feels pretty good. I'm just gonna massage it just a little bit. I'm pretty happy with that fit because it's sitting down real nice. Oh, one more last thing too. The trailing edge spacers too. We gotta glue these in before we put any glue on this airplane. So take these guys, put a little glue there. And glue this side in. You can either do the left or right side, it doesn't really matter. You can do it as you see fit. Now comes the fun part. We're gonna go and glue and seal the, seal the wing up. All right, so make sure you got a, a nice glue gun and make sure your glue gun's real hot because we're gonna use a lot of glue at one time for this. You wanna make sure you got a decent sized gun and you got plenty of glue sticks on hand. 
So first we're gonna glue the leading edge. This just helps the foam melt and seal them just a little bit better. And the top of the spar. We're gonna fold that over. And now's a good time to have a friend come over and press it down. Luckily this is a fairly small wing so I can do this with just myself. But if you guys are building bigger wings, it's nice to have a friend on hand. Or a big two x four and some weights. Now go ahead and take your time with this and don't let off the surface. Make sure you hold it nice and tight and for at least a minimum of about two minutes just to make sure the glue is 100% cured or cooled down. So once the glue is cooled down and dried, we're gonna go and peel the back of the wing up. Let's go ahead and put some tension on like this. Flip that up. And we're gonna put glue on this surface right here. I'm gonna fold that back down, and hold it right to the table, and put some even nice pressure on it. You don't wanna to use too much as to decrease the foam, but just enough to hold the wing down. So once that's all dry, we're gonna flip the wing back over, and we're gonna go ahead and cut out and remove our ailerons. Or not cut out and remove them, but just cut out and bevel them. I'm just gonna lightly crease them with a knife, just get them to fold over. It's important not to press down too hard when you're cutting this, because you don't wanna actually cut them out. Just enough to make the foam snap out. Once again, we're gonna take our knife, and we're gonna cut the 45 into them. Now be very careful again. Watch your fingers, watch your knife, and watch yourself when you do this. And if you're just not comfortable doing this, you can always use a sanding block and some sandpaper. You can see I move very slowly, I'm not rushing. I'm taking my time. And that part pops up just like that. Go and do the same for the other side. So once you guys have done hinging these, we're gonna go and reinforce these joints with some hot glue. To do that, I'm gonna old mount like this and make sure this surface is kind of like parallel with this. It's not super essential that it's parallel, it just makes it easier. So put a very light amount of glue. Notice I'm not using a lot, just a very small amount. Then take a piece of scrap foam or cardstock or whatever you got laying around and smear it down. This will help keep the paper from delaminating from the foam surface. It'll make your hinges last a lot longer than if you didn't do this. Now let them cool and don't flex them, just for a few minutes. And do the same for the other side. So now the hinges all dried and cooled. So this is all done. We're gonna go set it aside and go on to the twin boom pod pieces. So now we're gonna go and build the twin boom pod pieces. If you guys can see, this is uh, just a standard boom. It fits the power pod in there. So there it is. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first things first, we're gonna need these two pieces here. Basically the uh, main section here and the bottom uh, plate for the uh, rear section of the airplane. So first we're gonna lightly score this, not cut through, just score. This just makes it easier to remove the foam. Go and do that on all these sides right here. So once you guys have scored them, we're gonna go and clear out the channels. Just go and grab that and just lightly pinch and pull. Actually, I actually like to flip it around too on this side. I'm like, I'm a right hand dominant, so it's just easier for me to do. I just grab it and just squeeze and pull on it until it comes out. Nudge that side over just like that. And also do the same with the front pieces too. And also break these guys off too and discard these. We don't need these. Now you're ready to assemble this. All right, for this, I like to do it on a hard surface. This cardboard's a little too soft because I'm trying to get a hard edge when I fold these, so we're gonna go and remove the cardboard again. Now, if you notice, there's a little little kind of like score line here, like a very, very light mark. We're gonna go and fold those in just a little bit, like that. And now we're gonna do one side at a time. Before we put any glue on this, we're gonna go and roll the surface over just to get some uh, feedback on it. We can see how it goes together. This is also a B-fold, so that means beside you can see this part goes beside this piece because it goes down like that. It's important to use a table edge for this and not a flat surface completely because if you notice it's got these little kind of like divots. These are like alignment tabs for the piece lodge or for the uh, booms to go to the wing. That's why you have to do them over a floating table edge. All right, now we're going to glue one side. I'm gonna start right here, put some glue there, put some glue here, here. Don't fill this gap and fill it over here. 
You can just start with the back of the front. I'm gonna go ahead and go from the back and then move to the front. So now what you do is, it's important to have something that'll keep you fairly straight. I have like a, uh, what is this, a uh, uh, drafters? Uh, someone told me what this is and I already forgot it. Oh well, it's a right angle thingy. So I'm gonna do that there, look there. While the glue's still wet, fold this side over and also check that side too. And once it's cool, it should look like that. Go and do the same for the other side. All right, and now onto the last part, which is this little cover plate right here. We're gonna go and score open the sides and go and pull them out. And now we're just gonna go and glue it right in. I like to do both sides at the same time. So just go and put one side of glue there. Be careful with your fingers when you're doing this and glue the other side. Now for this, I like to line up with the back piece right here. This butt end just lines up right there. Slip that in there. Press it down, and use the table as your friend for this. So go and flip it over, and press the table down. Press it on the down on the table like this. And that's pretty much how you complete the boom. So go and do this one more time for the other uh, side of the boom, and we're ready to move on to the next step. So now, the next step is to take our wing and the booms and attach them together. Now if you notice, you guys gotta you guys got remove these pieces. Here's the uh, alignment tabs here, and here's the circle for feeding wires to. Go ahead and remove these guys and take them out. So now we're going to slip this into there, just like that. But before we do that, if you notice the paper sometimes curls out on the sides a little bit, and this can make it a little difficult. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our finger and pinch these so they're kind of like curved in. So they just kind of line up and slip in with ease. But just the top, not the whole thing. All right, once we're done with that, we're gonna go and put some glue on this surface right here up to the front. Go all the way up to the uh, leading edge of the wing. And that's pretty much that. Now go and take your pot and nestle it into place. Go ahead and keep constant pressure and make sure it doesn't move until the glue totally cools down and dries. Once that's done, go ahead and repeat the same step for the other side. And that completes that step. So before we do the power systems, we're going to do the, uh, the nose cones if you do the pusher style. These basically cover up these power pods and make them a little bit more streamlined. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So basically we just go ahead and you don't know, score these just like everything else and just open them up. I'm just gonna remove the center piece right here. Now, before we go any further, this is a B-fold, but we're gonna need to remove this paper on the inside. So grab it, simply just peel it out. And that's all done. Now I'm gonna try to fit it. And we're gonna remove this paper, paper up here too. I'm gonna roll this and fold this and massage it into place. The more time you spend doing this, the easier it will be to assemble the final nose when it comes time to gluing. And it's a lot easier to have it not fight you when you're putting glue in here. So I'm gonna roll it. All right, when I'm about satisfied with it, I'm gonna put, put the thing down to the table, check all the fits one more time, and start gluing. You can just do one side at a time. And when we glue it, we're gonna only glue right up to this crevice right here. Use the table as your friend, pull the pull up on this. You can also rock it back and forward. And I'm also moving this aside because you can see there's a little bit of glue spillage. If you guys are doing this too, you can also do it on some cardboard to keep you from making a big mess on your mother's table or wherever you decide to do this. <laughs> on your mother's table. <laughs> I did things like that. I get yelled at. All right, so once we've got that side done, we're gonna do the exact same to this side. Fold it down like that, and use the table. Gently roll it, don't apply too much pressure, otherwise you'll just end up creasing the foam. Just, just enough to hold it. And hold in place and let it cure and dry. Now once it's done, we're gonna open this up, because that makes it easier to glue, and we're gonna put some glue on this inside race right here. For this, you wanna do both sides at the same time. Fold it over. And we're gonna massage it into place. And then you should get something that looks just like this. So I, I like to have a cover here because this doesn't look very good if it's just flying out in the open when you're using the pusher style. So slip this cover on, all you use is just slide it right on. 
just like that. And it's just a nice like aerodynamic cover that just makes the plane look aesthetically a bit better. Okay, so once you guys are done blowing the wing and the boom section, now it's time to choose which tail you want. So we have the A tail, the P38 style tail, and the OV10 style tail. So go ahead and click the link or the annotation below and we'll get started. Okay, so this is the build for the A tail style tail for the airplane. So for the A tail, we're gonna go and need this piece and this piece only. So once we have this piece, we're gonna go and do the thing with their hinges. Go and lightly score them. And fold them down. And we're gonna bevel them. Now again, take your knife, hold it very close to the surface and gently push through. Take your time, don't rush, because you don't want to cut yourself. And be aware of where your fingers are and where the knife is at all times. You can always use a sanding block too if you're uncomfortable doing this. Now go ahead and do the glue hinges on the surface to keep these from delaminating. Put a very light bead of glue on the surface. Once you have the glue on the surface, grab some scrap foam and smear the most of the glue down. You're gonna take most of the glue off the surface with you. You only need a very, very thin layer to keep this uh, paper from coming off the foam. Go ahead and wait and let that cool down and dry. Now, once we're done hinging those, we're gonna go and crack the surface open in the center, like that. But we're gonna actually bevel these. You're gonna go for a roughly around 45-ish or so. It's not super critical, just enough to open these up so they slide together real well. I don't know the exact degrees for this, but I find 45 works pretty good. Hold that down. And you kind of see, we're starting to get the eight tail shape. One last step. Go ahead and take this surface right here, lightly score that, and fold this down. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna bevel this piece right here. We're actually gonna bevel a little bit beyond 45, more of like a um, 70 to like, 60 degrees bevel. <clears throat> All right, and that's gonna fold over like that. If you notice, it's still a little tough, so what we're gonna need to do is we're gonna need to bevel this surface as well. This is the inside surface where the most of the stabilizer is. And cut that side out as well. So you notice the whole surface is actually beveled now. And this is the stabilizer surface that's got the bevel in it. Do the same for the other side. And now we're ready to attach the stabilizer to our airplane. So if you guys notice that these foam pieces go into these slots here, keep these from flaying out. We're just gonna crush them and taper them a little bit with our fingers. We'll do the same for the other side and slip it right in. There we go. That looks pretty good. You can see that this surface looks like that. It's pretty flush, it fits all the way in. And the control surface moves with ease. Check the other side for consistency. That's pretty good too. So once we're happy with that, we're going to glue it in. So to glue this, we're gonna need to put some glue on the surface right here, on the back edge of that. And I put a little bit in this hole too. And also some on this piece as well. You need to have a piece of scrap foam around to squeegee most of the excess glue off. Pull it down like that. Press it down in there. Take your scrap foam or cardstock or whatever you got laying around, smear that glue down. There you go. Wait for that completely cool and we'll move on to the next side. Before we glue this side in, we're gonna need to glue this surface to kind of reinforce this as well. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna slip this out, but also hold the stabilizer on this side where the glue joint is, as to not rip and tug on it. And I'm gonna fold that open like that. Put some glue in here. Fold that down. I'll put the glue in here as well. Go and slip that in. And we're gonna smear the excess off just like the other side. So once that's all done, we're gonna go and install the servos for the A tail. So if you notice there's pockets here, we're gonna go and punch them out. For this step, we're gonna need two servos. They're gonna need be they're gonna need to be mirrored with the left and the right hand. If you see here, here's the left and here's the right. And if you guys are wondering how to assemble your servos, go ahead and check out the uh, FT Explorer build that Josh and Josh have covered. They've covered on how to assemble the servos and the linkage stoppers. So I'm pretty much going to slip this one into this pocket on this side. 
It's like feeding a wet noodle in there. That fits just like that. So now I put a little bit of glue and glue the servo. In. I like to glue it around this side and the other side. Just enough glue to hold the server down real well. Press it down and leave it alone. Go ahead and do the same for the other side. So once you're done with, with the uh, servo install, we're gonna install our control horns. So you guys notice there's a little cutoff here where these guys go. So I'm just gonna inset them into the surface like this. Once you guys have done the trial fit, we're gonna pull it back out. And we're gonna put some glue inside the surface. Go ahead and do the same for the other side. Go ahead and grab one of our push rods in the kit. We're going to slip that into the control horn. For the outermost hole for less throw but higher resolution. Pull it down there. Now if you notice, we're going to try to keep the surface as straight as possible. Not like this or like this, but like this. Measure where this comes out to be and then go about half an inch beyond that. I have a little nick mark right there that you can barely see. That's where I'm going to cut the wire. So once you cut the wire off, we're going to go and slip this piece of wire into our linkage stopper right here. Once that's done, go ahead and tighten it down. You don't need to tighten down real, real tight right now because we're going to need to make an adjustment once we're, before we fly. Go ahead and repeat the exact same process for the other side. So once you're done with that, we're going to move on to electronics. All right, so now we're gonna go and start the build for the P38 style tail. So if you guys decided to build the P38 style tail surfaces, we're gonna to need to use this. We're gonna use this style elevator and these uh, rudders. So go ahead and do the same thing with the control surface. Go ahead and bevel these out. Pull that over. And very carefully bevel the surface. If you guys are nervous with this, you can always use the sanding block. Go and take your hot glue gun and we're going to reinforce the surface. We're going to leave a very, very light bead of hot glue on the top of it. Don't worry too much about how much glue you use because we're going to take most of this off. So we're going to take a little squeegee, which is just a scrap piece of foam, and smear that down in there. You notice most of the glue comes off with me. Just a very, very light layer stays by. So the next thing we're going to do once we're done beveling this and uh, reinforcing our control surface hinge line, we're going to go ahead and move these little pockets here. Punch those guys out. If you guys notice, this guy fits directly right over that pocket just like that. Now we're gonna go ahead and take our tails, line them up, and stick them in. But before we do that, we're gonna curl the surface in right here to keep these from delaminating when we slide it in. I'm gonna take it and slide it down there. And do the same for the other side. Right now we're just trial fitting, not gluing, because we're making sure everything lines up and fits real nice. Pretty satisfied with that. Looks about right, nothing's hitting. So go and take the whole assembly off. Now first things first, we're gonna go glue the rudders to the stabilizer, the uh, elevator stabilizer. We're gonna slip these back out. Put a little bit of glue here and here. Slide that back down in there like that. You can take a squeegee and smear the excess glue off. Now before this completely cools down, you're going to take your right angle thingamajigger and hold it up to the surface and make sure this is 90 degrees. Once that's cool, go ahead and repeat the same process for the other side. So now the last step to attach this is we're going to glue these surfaces here. If you notice, we're going to actually put glue on the elevator side, not the fuselage side, because once again, we don't really know where the end of this is, so we don't want to make a huge glue mess. So go and take a glue gun, put a nice like kind of oval shaped glue thing there. And do the same for the other side. I'm going to slip this down and slide into the surface. So once this is all done, we're going to go install our servo, which is our last step here for this. Go ahead and punch out the pocket on the left side. So in the left pocket, we're going to go and slide our servo in. And we're going to put a little bit of glue on it and glue it down in there. If you guys notice, I'm having the uh, servo arm come out on the right side because the uh, control surface hinge line is right here on the inside part of the uh, fuselage. 
So once it's done, we're gonna take our drill horn and install it into the surface. You guys can kinda notice the mark there for that. We're gonna go and slip it in there. Just check out the fit. Fits pretty good. Pull it back out and put some glue in the surface. So the last step for this is we're gonna take our uh, push rod. You're gonna take the part with the Z-Bend and slide into the servo horn or control surface horn here. I'm gonna go for the outermost hole for the best resolution at the, with the least amount of throw. Now I'm gonna take it, take control surface, make sure this is perfectly flat or as close as uh, you can possibly get it. And then take your pair of cutters and cut off the excess. Now if you notice where I cut this, I'm not cutting off right where the silver arm ends. I'm cutting actually off about an inch or a half an inch forward of that surface. It's not paramount that you get as precise, but just have enough so you can make adjustments. Now we're gonna slip this to the hole over here. It might help if you undo the screw just a little bit, just so you can get the rod in the hole. Slide that back and just go and tighten this down just so you don't lose the screw. We're probably gonna go come back here and make adjustments right before we fly. All right, and that's how you assemble the uh, P38 style tail. All right, so now we're gonna start the build for the OV-10 style tail. This tail is actually looking like this. It's kind of like an H tail with the uh, top cut off. So it's gonna look like that when it's all done. So to get started, we're gonna go and bevel this surface right here. This is our control surface line. So I'm gonna take my, li my knife and lightly score this so I can open it very easily. Being careful not to cut through it with too much pressure. Fold it down like that. Take the knife and very lightly and slowly bevel the surface out to roughly about 45 degrees. Notice how I'm keeping track of where my hands are at all time and I'm moving very, very slowly. You don't wanna do this too quick because if you do get ahead of yourself, there's a good chance you might cut yourself. And if you're just a little too nervous with using the knife, go ahead and grab like a sanding block and some sandpaper and sand this part out. So once we're done with that, we're gonna go and reinforce our hinge line with a little bit of hot glue. I'm just gonna put a very small bead of glue on the surface, not really caring too much where it goes, just somewhere in the center. Grab a scrap piece of foam and smear most of that glue off. What this does is this keeps the paper from delaminating from the surface, so our control surfaces last a little bit longer. Go ahead and set that aside and let it cool down. For this part, we're gonna need to move this channel right here. So we're gonna lightly score the channel with my knife, but not press all the way through because I don't wanna cut through the paper that down and fold this down and pull that surface out. Now if you guys notice this is not really marked A or B fold. The reason why I didn't mark it is because I didn't want to have it exposed on the surface so you guys can have like a little bit of cleaner build. But this is going to be a B fold. So this is going to fold down in the groove just like that. So I'm going to take my hot glue gun, put some glue in that channel. Just enough glue to get it done and fold that over. I'm gonna take my right angle thingamajigger and hold it up to the surface. Take some foam, because I notice I have some glue squeezing out there, and push it and mash it down. Get most of that glue out. It's, got, it's imperative that you keep this surface kind of clear because our tail is gonna nestle up right there. That's why I'm making a big emphasis on removing most of this excess glue. Go ahead and do the exact same process for the other side. So once this is all done, we're gonna go set this piece aside and grab our fuselage. We're gonna need these pieces, these little spacers, they're gonna go like that. You have two of them. And we need our uh, rudders. So the first things first is we're gonna taper this side in just to make it slide easily in and out of the surface without ripping the paper off. Do the same thing for both of them. And I'm gonna do a trial alignment on the piece inside here. Fits nice and snug, feels really good. And pull this all back out, just like that. You can notice this piece stays with the uh, rudder surface. So I'll move this out. Put a little glue here, and a little glue there. Take this guy and slip it in there. If you guys have a little bit of glue squeegee, or oozing out of the surface, go and take a squeegee and just smear that down. Now before this cools, 
you're gonna need to take your right angle thingamajigger and hold up the surface and make sure that's 90 degrees. It's kind of hard to see, but it's not super essential if you get this part off, you can make adjustments in the future. But for the most part, I'm gonna try to keep it as 90 as possible. Go ahead and do the exact same process for the other rudder. So now we're gonna drag our uh, elevator piece over and we're gonna take our rudder pieces and we're gonna glue them into the surface like that. Now if you notice, this is a little taper here that ends on the front and this ends right there. It's a very, very nice fit or edge line, I, guess, I should say, and should fit like that. So we're gonna take a little bit of glue and put some glue on this wall here and on this surface here. Take your uh, vertical stabilizer and slide it in like that. Take your 90 degree thingy and hold up the surface like that. Make sure this is 90 degrees because this, this is a pretty crucial as far as um, aesthetics goes. If it's a little off, I wouldn't worry too much about it because the plane flies just great. But if you're one of those really tedious, you know, people that like to keep everything nice and straight, now's a good time to make sure it stays nice and straight. So now we're gonna do the second side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Put some glue on this surface here and on the wall piece here. Grab my rudder piece, slip it in just like that. Just be careful lining it up, just to make sure it stays nice and even with the other side. Take your right angle thingy, place it in there again. And make sure that stays 90 degrees. All right, so once we're done with this, we're gonna go ahead and slide it and insert it into the uh, twin boom wing section of the airplane. So to do that, I'm actually gonna put glue right here on this front part of this dorsal thing and put glue on this channel here. Do the same for the other side. And we're gonna go and glue it in. Go ahead and keep this and press it down nice and tight against the, the booms, just to make sure there's no deviations and it doesn't shift. Go ahead and set it aside and let it cool down for a few minutes. So once it's all dry and cooled down, we're gonna go install the servo. If you notice, there's a little pocket at the top for the servo. We're gonna punch that pocket out. Set that aside. We're gonna take our servo and straighten out the lead as much as possible. This will make the install real nice and clean. I'm gonna slip it through the hole like this and press the servo in. I'm gonna go ahead and take it back out, and put a little bit of glue around the case of the servo, and make sure it stays nice and tight in the surface. Now, as far as the wire is concerned, what I like to do is take the wire up here to this side and then lay it in this channel right here. What I'm gonna just take the tape and take the top part in here and pull this down real tight to the surface and that'll hold it in like that. I'm gonna do the same at the bottom by stretching this out, holding this nice and flat. And tape it in the bottom as well. Now we have the pocket here, we can punch that pocket out too. Or if you uh, don't want the pocket to be as big, you can cut it if you're building this from your plans. Before we finish the extension install, or the uh, servo wire install, I'm gonna take an extension. The one I have here is a 24 inch extension, but you guys may have shorter extensions, so you may need to layer them up. I think we sell a 12 inch extension in our seat pack, so you might need two of them to reach the inside. So that will be in like that. So I'm gonna go slip this in there. It's so long and noodly. <laughs> So to finish the install, I'm gonna take this tape, press it down to the surface like that. To finish this line up here, where you see these two pieces of tape, I'm gonna go and reinforce this side in as well. All right, so to do this, I'm gonna take the tape, and slowly massage it on the top, and very lightly curl one side in at a time. I'm slowly taking my time working the tape in to have not crinkles on it, because I just don't like crinkles on my control surfaces that much. Do the same for the other side. Lightly roll it in. And that's how you do tape lines like a pro, I guess. For the last step, we need to take our control horn right here and slip it into the surface. I'm gonna go ahead and just trial fit it in just to make sure it fits in real nice. That's good. Take it back out. And put a little bit of hot glue in the surface. Stick it back.
back in and let that cool down and dry, cool down to dry. All right, so now we're gonna take our push rod. We're gonna take the one with the Z-band end and slip it into the control horn like this. We're gonna go to the outermost hole for less throw but more resolution. Now, if you guys notice, you have a bit of excess rod here. We don't really need all of this, so we're gonna cut it off. But before you cut it off, you wanna make sure your control surface is flat, as close as possible, and cut off about half an inch forward of where the control horn would typically be, or the uh, wire would typically end. Cut off like that. Undo the screw on the linkage stopper. And slide this in like that. Go ahead and just tight, tighten it down temporarily for now, just to keep the screw from falling out so we don't lose that little screw. Cool. That's how you build the uh, OV-10 style tail for the uh, plane. All right, so now we're gonna go on to the uh, servo install. If you guys already know this, we've already installed servos for your tail. I just go, We just went ahead and put them in the build video for the tail since each one is just a little bit different. But we're gonna need to do the aileron servos now. So basically you're gonna need to do the same thing where we mirror the servos. If you, guys haven't, if you guys haven't figured how to put the servos together yet, check out the FT Explorer build that Josh and Josh have done. They've card on how to center the servos and put the linkage stoppers in. So now we're gonna go and layer a wing down like this. So to do this, to make it easy to fish in, I'm gonna take the uh, pointy end of the skewer, kind of push it into the servo pocket notch and slide it right in. So I can grab it here and pull it out. Now for the servo, I have to keep it about right here on the surface. I'm gonna slide it in like that. And usually it stays about right there. I'm gonna slide it back out. Take the glue gun, put some on that side, and some on this side, and slide it into place. While that's cooling, we're gonna go ahead and install the control horn on this surface. So this part, I'm gonna go try to fit the control horn again. Just slip it in there. Make sure I'm happy with the fit and pull back out. Put some glue in the slot and slip the horn back in. So once it's all cooled down and everything's nice and dry, we're gonna take our push rod, we're gonna take the end with the Z-Bend and slip it into the outermost hole on the control horn. This will once again give us less throw but higher resolution. I'm gonna go and make sure this, this surface stays centered about right there. Take my cutter and cut the wire off about an inch ahead of where the servo horn should end. So you can see about right there. Cut it off. And if you look, you'll see you got roughly about an inch or half an inch excess overhang. So I'm gonna go and do this screw and slip this into the hole. Go ahead and temporarily crank it down just to keep us from losing the screw. Once you're done with this, go and do the exact same process for the other side. All right, so once we're done with that, we're gonna go and get our wire harness and install these together. I'm gonna cut the success tape out of the way. Gonna push that down in there. Do the thing with the skewer again. Just kind of nestle it in there. And force that into there. And grab that. Go ahead and plug it together. Now when you plug these in, they you can they only supposed to go in one way, but you might be able to force in the wrong way. But just to keep consistency here, you notice that these are color coded. You have a uh, yellow, kind of orangish color, red, and then brown. You also may have white, red, and black, but same thing is in order. Basically make sure they line up. So yellow to yellow, red to red, black to black. So once you guys have done this, we're gonna take some tape, or you can use a little bit of hot glue in, in there. And we're going to go ahead and lock this down. This will basically keep this from getting pulled out when we're tugging in wires and feeding things around. And we'll pull it back through. Now if you notice I have this mess over here. We're going to take this side and feed it through this end. Grab that. Pull it out. And slip it in there just like that. Go and take tape and do the same thing as the other side. And pull this right through. Now the aerons are done. 
Now, if you guys have the tail servos, the model we're setting up is the A-tail, because this is the most complicated, but the uh, other two tails follow the same principles. So if you got a wire right here and a wire right here, we're gonna need the 12 inch extensions to get from here to here. So to do this, I'm gonna take the uh, female end, take the skewer. So once we do that, we're gonna run through just the same, just as, just as we did earlier. You're gonna do this for both sides or one side, depending on how many servos you have. So once you guys got that through, we're gonna need to plug them in just like that. Red, red, black to black, and so on. And put a little bit of tape on it. Do the same for the other side, exactly the same process. So now we're done running all the server wires and stuff. And now we're gonna move on to our power system. So now we're gonna need to get our fuselage again and figure out our power system. For this one, you have multiple things you can do. You can either do the pusher or the twin motors or whatever variation you can come up with within your head. For this, we're gonna do the twin, uh, the twin uh, engine mode. I'm gonna show you the pusher version too in case you decide to do that. So if you want to do the twin pusher, put it on like that. We're gonna take our power pod and we'd cut a notch out right here and slip this right in. It's pretty simple and you guys can kind of do whatever feels about right for you because it's pretty much gonna work no matter what. That's a, that's a simpler version, but we're gonna do the more complicated thing today. All right, so now we're gonna install the power system. We're gonna do the Power Pack B twin motor for today. So basically I have our Power Pack B with the 20 FESCs and the XT60s on them. You're gonna need to make two of these. We're gonna figure out whether we want to do differential throttle or just a normal twin with just straight throttle. So, but if you wanted to differential, check out the cruiser video. This basically means you can speed up one motor and slow down the other to control y'all on the airplane. But for now, since we have rudder, we're just gonna do a normal conventional uh, twin with no differential. So first we're gonna need a Y harness and we're gonna slip it through. All right, once we got the wire, wire through, we're gonna go and plug this in. So and tape that like the rest of them. And we're gonna set this aside. Now we're gonna need to grab our power Y harness, which is basically the same thing like the other ones. You're gonna notice it has two uh, male ends and one female. And we're gonna slip this thing through on both sides. So basically we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take a barbecue skewer, kind of nestle it up to the back of the connector and just kind of push it through. All right, so now we're gonna go and do the same on their side and run all of our wires through. So we got all the wires ran. You can see we got the uh, power wire for the um, speed controller here, which is the XC60 there. And we also have the signal wire that's under the wing. You can see the signal wire on this side as well and the power there. We got the leads running for the uh, control surfaces back there coming out here and here. And you can see the two wire harnesses here, one for later on, one for the throttle. It's a bit of a mess, but if you, if you work your time and take your time getting through it, it'll be pretty self-explanatory. So now we're gonna close these up. I'm gonna plug these guys in. Now, before you finish this up, go ahead and power this up and check the rotation of your motor and make sure it spins the right way. I've already checked them ahead of time, so I don't need to do this. But you can just do it with a servo tester or your radio and a battery. Go ahead and find the notches and nestle it in there just like that. It'll feel click a little bit too. Now we're gonna take a barbecue skewer. You can find these holes in the side and you should line up with the power pod and they'll go right in. I go through one side here, come around the other side, and break that hole as well. Then you should be able to kind of feed it through with these. Stop it right there, take your cutters, and cut it off. Take the remaining half and do it on the other side as well. Now go ahead and take the rest of the stick and do the exact same with the other side of the airplane. And that completes that step. Now the last step is to attach the wing to the uh, fuselage part. Now if you have your normal Explorer fuselage, this is the one from the episode, you can see I already have a hole here, but this hole wouldn't normally exist here. So you simply just take your skewer, notch a hole here, here, and pull it to the other side. If you're anticipating a lot of high loads and stress, you can reinforce this area with like a paint stick and drill a hole through that. But I found the double, doubled over foam is plenty strong enough. All right, so now we're going to install the receiver and set up our model as we see fit. So before we do that, if you guys have props, take them off. I, I don't care how many times you've done it. It's always wise to take these off because you never know when it could bite you. And it's much, much easier to replace a prop than it is to replace your skin because that takes a while to grow back. So now we're going to install our receiver. Now your model may dif uh, differentiate depending on which, which tail setup you did. But the things are the same is that we have a throttle and we have ailerons. Those are the same on both models. So if you remember which wire harness was what, I have the throttle one right here. That's gonna go into one, which is throttle on Spectrum. And then the ailerons, which is uh, slot number two on Grapner. 
and then we have three and four for the tail. Now, if you guys have just done just one elevator servo and not the weird A tail, which we're setting up, you only have one cable and that's gonna go to your channel three or your elevator slot, depending on which radio you use. So before we power this up, I'm gonna go ahead and set the model so it's a V-tail, because if you notice, this is a V-tail, which is still an A-tail, they function virtually identically. So to go on my model, I'm gonna do this for the Grapner. Your radio will, will differentiate uh, greatly, but I do model type. And I see acro, because it's an airplane. The wing type is normal, and the tail type is V-tail. I already have that selected, but to show you how to do it, I'm gonna click V-tail. You can see normal, V-tail, or two elevator. I'm doing V-tail, so self-explanatory. Hit V-tail, hit enter, and it's done. And if you guys go to the servo monitor and click that, if I move the stick, you can see three and four, which is a one and two for the uh, tail servos, they'll move. And when I move the rudder, they move as well. So now that I've confirmed that on the menus, Spectrum does the same thing, they have a menu there too, along with Futaba and, uh, what is the other one? It's Tyrannus too. They all do the same thing, they all have a model that you can kind of confirm with. So I'm gonna plug it in, check it out. All right, so that looks good. Looks like maybe the rounds are moving correctly. Not in the right direction, they're just moving on the right channel. And the elevator, that's moving too. And the throttle moves as well. Okay, but before we go any further, we're gonna go, go back to our radio, and we're gonna look at all of our trims. Make sure they're zeroed or centered, depending on how your radio works. So once this is all powered up, you can kind of see when the control surfaces are all centered, that this guy is actually not centered. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and unscrew this a little bit. Let's see if I can get in there. Left to loose, right to tight. So I'm gonna turn to the left, hold that centered, and then tighten it back up. You know, we'll make sure you tighten this pretty good too. You don't need to over tighten it, but tighten it enough so it cannot come out. Loctite can help too if you guys are being really critical about where it is, because this is, this is a point of failure if this does come out. We're gonna look at our tail surfaces. They look pretty even. They're actually holding really well, so I guess we won't adjust those. We're just gonna come back and tighten them down just to make sure they're still uh, solid. Now we're gonna, I'm gonna walk you through a V-tail in which directions they go. Because V-tail is a little bit confusing if you're not really sure about how they work. But if you look, we're gonna pull up. And that's the way it should go, because these deflect upwards, the air goes this way and the plane goes down. So it pitches the plane of the tail down and the thing climbs upwards. Now for y'all, these guys should move in different directions. You can kind of see it right there. And luckily mine are moving in the right directions, but if they weren't, I would have to either swap the wires in there or reverse some channels in the radio. But you can see that when I'm going left, this side comes up and this side goes in. So basically if you think about it, it slides this way. And to go right, it slides that way. So it's just a little bit weird looking, but it does fly really well and y'all is pretty nice. It's actually a little bit coordinated too, because it, it kind of banks or rolls the airplane just a little bit. So once we confirm this is going the right way, I'm gonna check my aerons and make sure they work the right way too. So I'm gonna to roll to the right, and the plane is rolling to the left. This is not correct. So we're gonna to need to go into our radio and flip some settings around. So for that, that's uh, channel two. Hit normal. Now I'm gonna to roll to the right. This side comes up, and that side goes down. And if you think about it, if the airflow were to hit this wing, it's gonna push that side down, and that side's gonna be pushed up, so it's gonna roll the airplane. So all the control services are functioning correctly, and the motors work. So we're gonna go and plug it, and then we're gonna assemble our wing twin boom section to the fuselage, and we'll be ready to fly. For this side, this is kind of an old fuselage. You may have a cutout here. I accidentally ripped it out. So I'm just gonna slip the wires in there. And slip the receiver in there. Just be careful and take your time. If you mash the wires, it's okay. You can just slide around, rearrange it. I'm gonna slip that down in like that. Now you're gonna take your rubber bands and rubber band one side to the other. If you guys are concerned about this, you can add additional rubber bands, but I find two is enough since this is a light flyer. And we're gonna put the props back on and we're gonna go fly it. But before we fly, the last thing we need to do is we need to check center of gravity. And to do this, we usually take our two fingers and we balance the airplane with the battery and everything inside of it. Now for this model, the center of gravity is about two inches away from the leading edge of the wing. 
right now you can see I drew a mark here, but this is still a prototype of the kit. When you guys actually get the kit, there'll be a little indentation here. And also, throws too. I already dialed in the throws to this model, but included in the kit is a throw gauge. And if you guys are unfamiliar how to use that, check out Josh and Josh's build video on the Explorer when he shows you how to cover that topic. So let's go ahead and fly it. So we're now out on the field and we're gonna do one more quick check with the control surface to make sure they go the right way. So I'm gonna check my neurons. Yep, still going the right way. And the elevator. And the rudder. All right, so it's all confirmed, still works good. Now we're just gonna launch it. It's slightly breezy, but this plane handles really, really good in the wind. So I'm just gonna go chuck it. Well, that's really uneventful. I think that's fairly normal flying. Rudder works real well. There's the rudder. Do a roll or two. Yeah, it flies in the most conventional way, despite being an A-tail style airplane. Inverted, handles it nicely too. So if you guys are flying the other tails, they do not have rudder, so it becomes more of a banking yank style airplane. I just chose to choose the, uh, the, v or the A tail since it's uh, a rudder with the least amount of servos. Let's do high speed pass. This thing's fun. It actually has a pretty good amount of power too with the twin B pack. All right, so I was gonna put in for landing. Bring it towards us. The wind's coming out my back. And that's it. So that's fairly uneventful, but uh, hey, I hope you guys like take this concept because this is the Explorer after all, and try different things out because the, the tails are just part of the, what makes this thing unique as is, is Josh's vision. So take it out, try something new, try all the configurations out because it's just cheap foam at the end of the day. So I well, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.